My research is about perception, in particular how fish perceive and use coral reefs. Healthy fish communities are important to Australia. They sustain a strong fishing industry, they support the health of the Great Barrier Reef and its ability to cope with impacts like climate change, and they provide draw cards for tourists. Fish rely on the elaborate structure of the reef for shelter, and we know that in general, the more holes and crevices in the reef, the greater the abundance of fish. We also know that climate change, which causes coral bleaching and greater storm intensities, is likely to drive the reef from a bumpy and intricate environment to a flatter, smoother one. This will have serious consequences for fish that rely on crevices in the reef for refuge from predators. However, climate change and associated impacts are unlikely to reduce reef structure at all scales. What does this mean? A storm that breaks plating corals reduces the number of large overhangs, but will not affect the number of smaller holes and crevices. This is important as fish of different sizes are likely to perceive and interact with the reef at different scales. In this case, large coral trout lose their shelter, but smaller reef fish can fit within remaining holes. To give you an illustration, mice and moose are herbivores in North America, but despite both eating plants, they move and feed over very different areas. So the landscape perceived and used by moose will be much larger to that seen and used by mice. So why are we interested in how fish of different sizes respond to loss of shelter? Put very simply, fishermen want to catch big fish and reef health relies on fish of all sizes. My research investigates two questions. How do reefs break down as a result of impacts like bleaching and cyclones? And how does this affect the size of fish found on a reef? In an initial study looking at what happens to a reef after a bleaching event, I discovered loss of both small and mid-sized refuges, followed by a loss in small and mid-sized fish. This provided proof of concept, but the equipment used only allowed measurement of structure on a single line along the reef. The next step in my project is to produce 3D images of the reef by stitching together thousands of photographs taken from an autonomous underwater vehicle. This will allow extensive mapping of the reef to explore more thoroughly the interaction between the availability of shelter and the size of fish within the community. So how will this help us? Well, by comparing results among reefs subject to particular types of disturbance, we can then make predictions how climate change is likely to affect fish communities and the consequences for reef health, fishery catches and tourism. Most importantly, it will help reef managers understand which fish are particularly at risk and in need of our protection.